ladies and gentlemen i am very excited and pleased to have stand here to deliver 75th platinum jubilee presidential oration of cardiological society of india and uh, my topic is we are at the moment at the 75th year so what will be the cardiology when when csi completes 100 years that is 2048 a futuristic dimension so question is do do i can i predict the future do I, do i have a scientific basis you we all know that the cardiology has been a extremely technology driven branch from coronary intervention we have reached to structural intervention all kinds of structural intervention including valve replacement through the catheter is possible but can we be more smarter can we be more precise can we be more predictable that what kind of device to use what size of device it should be accurate every time it should be precise so that we reduce complication and can we improve these devices anyway there is device can be improved the only way improve device is to a di digital transformation and that is possible through the data science there is no other way to do transformation and data at the moment i am general data i am not these are not particularly healthcare data or cardiology data in 2013 the data was 9 billion terabytes now it is 120 billion terabytes the phenomenal growth in data and by 2025 it will be 181 billion terabytes so this data human mind cannot analyze 100% we need something to analyze this data so we collect the hard data from various institute in europe and america they have already done it and this data is pre processed and split into trained data and test data which is later put into logistic regression model using algorithmic mathematical algorithmic uh, pattern and new data is created and new data again is subjected to trained logistic regression model using algorithm to decide to predict where whatever investigation or clinical uh, pattern can predict whether it is healthy heart or a disease heart so data from ehr that is electronic health record and imaging are processed through machine learning deep learning and computer vision artificial intelligence and ultimately we get a automatic diagnosis continuous remote monitoring improved decision treatment selection and idea is to get precision medicine and reduce cost so data from experimental data biological data clinical data and data from wearables all will become hard data and they can be used through ai in heart failure preventive cardiology diagnostic cardiology interventional and electrophysiology in all areas of cardiology amount of publication and citations that have been done in 2021 through the through the publication of ai enabled practices in cardiology it stands number 3 in all branches of cardiology so it is progressively increasing in cardiology for those who may not know about what is artificial intelligence i would like to say that it is not internet it is a software the internet is a connectivity internet is for connectivity and automation whereas artificial intelligence focuses on analysis interpretation and decision making which is based on data previously stored into it coming to who produces artificial intelligence software there are five companies which are doing this job in 2012 it started it, the error rate was high that time but by the time we 2017 company came the error rate is 3.46% which is hardly anything we know that artificial does intelligence and human intelligence the difference is of conscience artificial intelligence do not have conscious whereas human intelligence has conscience that conscience despite the conscience we know that human mind can also make a mistake 
but mistakes are less or some I, some areas are better interpreted by artificial intelligence which human mind cannot see human eyes cannot see coming to the data which are available projected currently the data is data industry is in the healthcare it uh, it's about 538 billion dollar industry it will progress to 2500 billion dollar industry by 2032 this is just a projection and the most important projection has come from pwc one of the big fours the ai could contribute up to 15.7 trillion to the global economy by 2030 enhancing the productivity and driving innovation so uh, we all know heard several times several speakers have spoken about artificial intelligence simple definition technique that allows computer system to mimic the human intelligence and behavior and the ma machine learning subset is ai that uses statistical techniques to enable machines to learn from data and improve experience deep learning subset is machine learning in which multi-layered neural network like a human network human neurons learn from the vast amount of data just to sh show by example you can see the very multi layers of uh, convoluted layers are there and data is passed through so if we store a data for cat and dog every time ask what is it it will process and give a correct answer dog as a dog and cat as a cat. Who invented it? It is uh, Alan Turing invented long back in 1950. And that is called as Turing test. Then father of AI is John, John McCarthy, who implemented AI into use in human life. And 1959, Arthur Samuel coined the term machine learning, and he himself played a checker game with the machine learning game and he was beaten, though he was a champion for checker, he was beaten by the machine. And this is a classical example where artificial intelligence machine beat the human brain, the master of, a master champion of the chess. There are 106 companies who are open to look into AI-enabled services in healthcare and they are in all areas of cardiology, be, be it drug therapy, research, genetic, medical record, data analysis, anything that you name is there. Currently, the ECG, X-ray chest, echo, all these typical investigations have already been tested, validated, and approved by FDA to be used in investigative machines like ECG and all other simple tests and complex tests too. And AI ECG has done the wonder it can just asymptomatic left ventricular dysfunction which cannot be picked up by echo, echo will show false positive that it, the EF is normal, whereas ECG will say that this patient will develop low EF, uh, low EF later, same is for silent atrial fibrillation, physiologic age assessment, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, amyloid heart disease, and pulmonary hypertension. I will quote some example. This is how in 2020, it is called as breakthrough technology by FDA and given a FDA approval for use in the ACG. And what it does, it, does, it identifies the physiologic age, the age of a patient, and also the sex of the patient. It's unbelievable that ECG can find out the age and sex of the patient. Similarly, if a patient undergoes heart transplant, his chronological age, we can see that it is increasing, increasing but his biological age is decreasing post-transplant. So this is something which is worth knowing that we, as I've said, ECG can predict normal, normal sinus exam ECG can say that EF is going to be low when echo is normal, no EF low, and five years later, same patient has echo, uh, the EF as 31%. So coming to uh, asymptomatic LV dysfunction, it is almost 2% of global population have asymptomatic LV dysfunction, 
and up to 9% of the people over the age of 60, 60 years have asymptomatic LV dysfunction and the AUC is 93%, which is very good. And plain single lead ECG through Apple Watch, 88% AUC, that's very good for diagnosis. We know that symptomatic AF is, a tip, is the iceberg, tip of the iceberg. But what is more is a subclinical or silent AF, which can be diagnosed by AI-based ECG, and it's a very good tool. AI can convert 10-second ECG into an extended alter to screen patient for atrial fibrillation that will cause the end of the alter monitoring test for sure. The question is, can, based on this, can we treat this patient? The current best evidence is AI ECG, and if you monitor clinically all Chad's uh, score and all other things, then you can consider using anticoagulant therapy. It can also diagnose our aortic stenosis, it can estimate aortic stenosis, as well as cardiac amyloidosis. Simple plain X-ray, if it is AI enabled, it can diagnose, predict heart failure, valvular heart disease, pulmonary hypertension, coronary artery disease, and atrial fibrillation. And researchers have proven that plain X-ray can predict 10 year risk of death from heart attack or stroke quite correctly. So ECHO, coming to ECHO, the software that is used, AI-based software is called as Ultromix, and it automatically detects 62% ejection fraction and avoids intra-observer or inter-observer error with the AUC of 83%. It can also work in the contrast echo, it can work in, in the Doppler echo, it can also work in the strain echo. And it can give us good idea about diastolic function and can grade the diastolic function even when is echo is, true echo is not, I mean, just, uh, I mean, which echo which is not AI-based cannot show. The AI-based analysis of RV function is something very reliable and it's unbelievable routinely uh, to do RV EF through a echo is very difficult. Automated detection of coronary artery disease is, AUC is 93%, which is very, very good just based on echo. And of course, the imaging quantification of by echo and measurement through AI-based echo of aortic stenosis and mitral regurgitation is very fast, very reliable. It takes about 20 seconds to do all measurement and no manual uh, activity is required. It saves time, energy, and gives accurate, precise report for measurement and quantification of all other parameters which are valuable clinically for doctor to treat. The hypertrophic cardiomyopathy amyloid and pulmonary hypertension can be picked up by echo, enable, uh, AI-enabled echo. Similarly, congenital heart disease, TOF, and single ventricle example, and even fetal echocardiography, AI is extreme, AI-based echo is extremely useful, and of course, speckle tracking. So how does it help in clinical practice? It will help in heart failure admission, response to GDMT diuretics and diuretic therapy, and also tell about cardio-oncology patient precise quantification and, and also reduce the need for the cardiac MRI for chamber quantification. There's a machine available uh, commercially, what we call, what we call is an echo machine, Philips echo machine. It, it quantifies all, all the data automatically. So then coming to City, AI-based city machine, it can reconstruct all the images, motion correction can be there, and calcium scoring, epicardial fat, plug, and city FFR can be easily picked up and correctly pre uh, precise, very precise as the time passes. Similarly, 3D construction of the images from the CT scan coronary angiography, which is very highly uh, clear and resolution is very good. So we can see a CMR on the left side without AI and other side with AI. And the reading difference, 161, 137, which was more clinically relevant. So it, the diagnosis wise, it can help in precise diagnosis. Just now we saw some images. 
And here also there is a video which shows that AI-based CMR can help in diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy, Fabry's disease, pulmonary hypertension, amyloid psychoid, and tocosubo cardiomyopathy. The CMR is also very helpful in, in heart failure diagnosis of both preserved ejection fraction and reduced ejection fraction and diastolic dysfunction. And predictability and accuracy in measurement and quantification are all tested, validated, and they are all very clearly very good. And similarly, AIBS CMR uh, strain imaging is also very good, very accurate. It can be M MPI. You can see AI based and non AI based MPI are compared in the study, and we can see that AI based MPI picks up CAD more often than non MPI based, and it is statistically significant difference. So global CAD diagnosis, 88% probability by MPI, and LED disease, 86%, whereas LCX and RCA a little low. So left ventricular strain from myocardial perfusion imaging is also can be done through CMR, and simple Google Eye study is going on in India, uh, in Shankar Netrala, Chennai, where by just looking at the image of the retina, age of the patient, biological sex of the patient, smoking, HV, A1C, BMI, and systolic blood pressure are predicted quite accurately. And, and now coming to coronary intervention, the revolutionary cath labs, AI-based cath labs are already manufactured. They are in place, but only few centers are having this. And the entire data, pre-intervention, intervention, and post-intervention intervention data are processed through AI-based uh, uh, software and can give very good reading, ultimately single page report, and can segment a coronary arteries, can find out the anomalies, and see the automatic segmentation of the, by AI of the normal coronary angiography, and can give a, a, it can score, give a center score, a FFR, and through all these, ultimately we get a report which is clinical, using clinical presentation, angiographic data, imaging data, and diagnosis and management data, and it produces a treatment plan, whether it should be PCI or a conservative treatment for given patient. Similarly, all multimodality imaging can be, uh, can be processed through AI, one single uh, entire process, and it reduces the diagnostic cost, improved diagnostic e efficiency, improved clinical outcome, evaluating function precisely, predicting risk, outcome, and assessing, assisting in making a treatment decision that's very important. So ultimately what will happen when after the angiography, AI-guided frame selection, segmentation, after that AI-guided lesion detection, classification, AI-guided risk stratification, treatment planning, and AI-guided in invasive coronary angiography interpretation for logging and reporting. And it will produce a single page report about the severity of stenosis, FFR, syntax score, the predict prognosis, five year prognosis with the MACE rate, and treatment plan with the conservative or PCI. So you don't have to do anything, just do angio and you will get this. And of course, it needs to be validated by a qualified cardiologist. AI uh, is used in OCT, we all know Altrian software is available. And there are quite a few machines with Altrian software in India also, and it's completely validated. It gives excellent measurement and quantification, particularly at times, you know, detecting, finding EEL can be difficult, but here you don't need to find EEL. Automatically, you'll get a size of the stent and length of the stent automatically through this software. And it also does a color coding of uh, the intima uh, tunica, the lumen, tunica media, lipid, and calcium. And it can give a very good idea about, and you don't need to be a very, a very expert to find out what is happening. Similarly, IVAS will also get similar software for quantification. IVAS, it is very important. Many times we find it difficult to find out where is the EEL. This will be a very, really, really very useful, along with the co-registration, AI-based co-registration. So structural heart also, it can pick up the uh, data from history, 
physical examination, echocardiography, blood and ECG data, and image guided therapy, and, and give us idea about automatic quantification of target anatomy, device selection type and size of the de device, and procedural guidance as well, and early discharge and remote surveillance through telemedicine data, EHR data obtained from a wearable devices from a remote places. And EHR data for each one will be, uh, will be stored in, in, the much, in the software and any institute can retrieve those data and use it for patient treatment. Then AI in endovascular, there is special endovascular lab. It will also produce what is the size and length of the graft that is required along with the fenestration where it is required. And that will help a lot for endovascular intervention. Similarly, AI in AP monitoring a patient from a remote area just by AI-based software, accuracy is 94% as much better than any other method of evaluating or integrating pacemakers. The FDA gives nod for a next generation cardiac mapping and algorithm to enable more precise evaluation in 2022, the EP mapping is very, very reliable and where appellation is required is clearly pointed out and done. So taking data from all over, a single page report will be produced by AI, which is not possible for a human brain to do it. It's a very complex data to process in few seconds and produce a report. So it will save human energy, human time and money also. It will reduce the cost. So where are we now? We are now in the process of NI-enabled equipments and devices. And in next one and a half decades, what we will see is all these devices and equipment will become AI-based. Then from there, where will we progress? The AI will become quantum AI. Groundbreaking field that combines the power of quantum computing with innovation of artificial intelligence result is powerful tool that can revolutionize the way we solve problems and discover new possibilities in the areas of healthcare. Just to tell you that there is a quantum AI supercomputer, three companies have come together to produce these. These are all micro, uh, software giant, Microsoft, IBM, and Google together. And the, the room size that is required is huge. It looks like this, it has a multi-layered evaluation and this will change the way we work for patients or patients. So in 2048, 100 years from now, the, it will be a quantum based quantum AI, which will be ultimately interfaced in all cardiology equipment and devices. And it will, it, it is already in the process in ECG and wearable devices also, as, as I said, the, from the remote area, we'll get this, all individual data, what we call electronic health record, from home, work, areas of recreation, car, wherever you are, that your data will be continuously accrued and saved in a software with a code, so that if you go to any hospital, you retrieve that code and get complete EHR data. So where we are, so we started yesterday with the intuitive medicine, which was more symptom-based. Then later at this stage, we are today in evidence-based medicine, where we are population pattern-based diagnosis is done. In future, it will be individual algorithmic-based and it will be a precision medicine list of the mistakes. So it will, because of the quantum AI and AI interface, it will improve the precision the delivery of healthcare, reduce the cost and time and energy. Digital quantum AI will lead hard care infrastructure uh, at 100 years of centenary of CSI and transform cardiology care in next two and two and a half decades. If we don't shape our own future, powerful technology companies will happily shape it for us that we know. So this is a classical quote by Robert Kennedy in 1966, may you live in interesting times. Quote, 
like it or not, we live in interesting time. There are times of danger, uncertainty, but they are also more open to creative energy of a man than any other time in the history. Thank you very much for kind attention. Uh, thank you, Professor Bank, for your excellent lecture.